The greater yellow legs obviously gets its name from its long yellow legs, which are clearly visible unless it is wading in the water. It can be distinguished from the very similar lesser yellow legs by its larger size, its voice, and a bill, which is longer, thicker at the base, and slightly upturned. Its long yellow legs allow it to wade in deeper water, and it preys on small fish and aquatic invertebrates. It can even spear small fish with its long bill before swallowing them whole. The greater yellow legs seen here in New York is only visiting on a migration stopover between its non-breeding range in southern North America and throughout most of South America, and its breeding range in northern North America. Thus, some individuals uh, are short-distance migrants coming from southern North America to their breeding range in Canada, while others are neotropical migrants coming all the way from South America. Immature birds, and also perhaps birds which may not be as healthy, say for example because they have parasites, uh, these birds may remain in the non-breeding range throughout the summer instead of migrating. Both parents help to raise their young, and after breeding uh, in these Canadian boreal forests, the greater yellow legs can begin its, quote, fall southward migration as early as late June and early July. Uh, as a result, the time window of their southern migration, stretching from perhaps late June into November, is one of the longest windows for North American birds. It is a little harder to study these birds since their breeding area is less accessible, because their preferred habitats may vary depending on rainfall, and because it is hard to distinguish between them from the very similar lesser yellow legs. In this video, the two larger birds are greater yellow legs, and the two smaller birds are lesser yellow legs. You can see how similar they are. They differ in size. The greater yellow legs, once again, their beak is slightly longer and slightly upturned, maybe a bit more thicker at the base. Their sounds are different. Their behavior is slightly different. The greater yellow legs may bob its head a bit more. And the ankle region is a bit more swollen on the greater yellow legs. I would like to clarify something that I just said, and I do this not to be nitpicky, but rather to point out an important feature of avian anatomy. Birds, like dinosaurs, have legs which possess more or less the same bones as yours, and the joints bend in the same way. You might not think that when you look at a bird's leg or a dinosaur's leg because what you might think to be the knee is actually the ankle. So the thigh, the femur, and the knee of birds are often hidden by the feathers. What we see as uh, the lower leg might appear to be the thigh, and then what we uh, perceive to be the knee is actually the ankle. Birds have very long feet, and so their knees do not bend in the opposite direction as yours do. It's that you're looking at the ankle, which bends in the same way that your ankle does above their very long feet. So, in some senses, the greater yellow legs is actually the greater yellow feet, since that when you, quote, look at its legs, most of what you're seeing are actually its long feet.